So here we are now in Polyboard. Let's start a new cabinet. Let's put the language first into English. And let's start a new cabinet. And starting a new cabinet, let's take the free shape option. And let's click on the edit button. And so we can draw the shape in of our cabinet. Let's get rid of the these extra points here by clicking, double clicking on the point. And here we have now a, just a rectangle. And what we want to do is to be able to draw the plan of the cabinet with the curved back into polyboard. To do this, we need the actual points that are going to make up our segments. So to start off, let's go into a CAD program. Here we have ProjiCAD. And let's set up the cabinet with its curved back as a plan in ProjiCAD. Let's take a rectangle to start with. And let's give the dimension of the rectangle Say, for instance, we want a, rec a, a cabinet which is two meters long. So I'll, write, I'll write, type in two meters. And let's, on the height, let's say we want it um, a depth of 600 millimeters. And here we have a cabinet, a square, which represents the global uh, shape of the cabinet. And now we want here, put in a curve back at the, in, in here. So let's just take an arc, a three-point arc, and just have a simple curved arc going into the back here. Right, a cabinet shape is here. So if we do a trim command onto the cabinet shape, let's get rid of the let's get rid of this and this. And this say is now our cabinet plan. What we need to do is to divide this arc up into a um, uh, segments. So let's just take the draw command and take point divide and click on our arc and say for instance we want eight segments for the for this example let's put eight segments of course the, the more segments you put into the into the arc the smoother it's going to look into the polyboard but we don't need it to be very very smooth in the way that it's only going to be in polyboard for a rough representation and once polyboard has done the modeling and defined all the different details of the project, we'll be able to take it out of polyboard and put it back into ProjiCAD um, as a DXF file and redraw the arcs through the different segments. Okay, so now we have the the arc is divided into eight segments. Now what we need to do is we know the position of these segments relative to the corner here. So I'm going to put my coordinate system here and I'm just going to take here now um, ordinate ordinate dimensions and I'm just going to do ordinate take the ordinate coordinates of each point so I'm just clicking on each each point let's take that one off so it gives it a bit of a here and let's take this one will be 60 and these will be the same because it was divided up into eight the, on the on the y position will be the same. Now let's take the x positions of each point. And the x positions will need all the x positions because there's no symmetry in the middle. And now we have the x positions. And of course here we can all take an x position which is the total length of our, bit of, of our cabinet, whereas this particular point, this is not exactly on the point. Let's give an exposition here. Here we are, that's better. Be in the middle here. Okay, now we have the x positions of every point and the y positions of every point, and let's put them into polyboard. We're going to polyboard, and let's put this particular point, make sure this particular point here in the wall at the corner is at x0, y0. And now let's put this point here at x, y300, which is this point here, x0, y300. And it is already in x0, y300. But what we need now are extra points to define the arc of the circle. And the first extra point will be at uh, 2, 3, 1, with what x231, that is, and y429. So let's put in polyboard a point here. We double click on this line, put in a point, and we put it in x here, 231, 
and we put in the y coordinate which will be 429 and we click the tick and that will put the point in place. Now let's put another point in. This point here will correspond to this particular point here x478 and y523. So let's put x four seven two and y five two three. I click a tick, and now we're actually building up our our curved shape. Um, but I could have, we could maybe put this point here at two meters as well, x two meters and y 300 that will give me the the global sh uh, sorry not y 300 x2 meters y 0 like that that will give me the total length of my my cabinet and let's put this one here at a x200 2000 sorry x2000 y 300 and that will be the midpoint of my of this point here so we're going to continue going on now. Let's put in the third point, uh, which is this point here, uh, x736, 736, y581. So we just double click here again, and then put x736 and y581. Tick that, and there we have this is the way we're going to continue building up the curved back with segments. I'm going to put another point in here. Let's just go through it all. This point will be um, x1000 and y600. Let's put another one in here. And this one's going to be x12. Six four and y five eight one. Another one in here, and this will be x one five two two, one five two two, and y five two three. And another point in here. I think this will be the last point, which will be x. One seven six nine and Y four two nine. So here we have now a nice curved back, but actually made up of segments. The next thing we have to do, of course, is to define each segment as being a back, making sure that each segment is back. So if I click here and I click here, I'm just making sure that they're all backs. I look in here, to see if there are backs. They are all backs. Backs, backs, backs. Make sure this is a side. Make sure this is defined as a side here, and this is a front. That's fine. And I click OK, and now we have the form of our, the general form of our cabinet. So we click OK, and here we have it. This is the form of our cabinet. Let's look in 3D what this gives. So. Here we have now our basic cabinet with our curved segmented back. So what we can do now is just organize this cabinet so that it suits our particular purpose. For instance, if this cabinet is, for instance, um, an island or uh, a bar uh, with one side being curved here people to come up against and on the other side we want to put cupboards we would use a sub method we would create a library sub method modifying the box for assembly methods for instance we could take the top and say that the top is actually priority of all the other sides and that we would create a, a rule here saying that the top being a priority of the side when, when, the, when the top is a priority on another part um, for instance, when it goes over um, the bottom, the, the sides, 
and when it goes over the back and when it goes over the front we have an overlap of 13 millimeters and if I say OK and now apply this to our cabinet we can see that our top now is overlapping and it will give a sort of a tabletop or it could give a bar effect if we need for instance a, a the bottom here to be raised up we could do, also do using a sub method now the sub method allows us to create a method where all intersections with specific panels will be modified at once so all the different segments here are considered as backs and we can change the relationship of the back for instance with the bottom here it's very easy now to take the box full method and say that for instance um, concerning the backs uh, let's take we put everything that is a for a new a new rule everything that is overpassing which would be for instance the backs and the sides the backs and the sides when they come into an underpassing um, which would be the bottom an underpassing panel which is the bottom and we would have an overlap for instance of say a hundred millimeters and that would give something like this when we apply it to the, the bit of furniture so now we have the, the front the sides and the back sorry overlapping to the bottom of the bit of furniture now let's go into the bit of furniture and add some doors and windows Take into this, click into the volume of our bit of, of our cabinet, add an upright. We can click into this volume here and add doors. Let's add a couple of doors here, double door. Making sure that these doors are, if we do take them built in so that they slide underneath. They're actually underneath the top, so they're built in we can put in here for instance a couple of shelves has some shelves let's add a couple of shelves so we're actually just building the cabinet as if same way as if we do if it was a simple square cabinet um, let's go into here and put in another upright here in the middle the and let's say that we want to put some drawers in this particular section here if I try to put in some drawers I can add drawers but you will notice that when the curved, we have a curved back, the drawers, the assembly uh, function, assembled drawers, are not possible. That means we cannot make a drawer with the back that is curved and a drawer that, that fits the curved back of a bit of furniture. To, if we need the assembled drawers, then what we have to do, let's take away those drawers there, is we have to put in first a double back. So we put in a double back and give it a distance from the back say 50 millimeters and you can see now that this volume here is created a new volume and this volume is rectangular volume it's not a curved back volume and now when I put in some drawers I can have the assembly function is, is active and I can put in assembled drawers and let's say we can put in five assembled drawers I will not apply them globally I will be built in as the doors and now we have the assembled drawers in the middle of our furniture. Notice that polyboard is, cur as is calculating it all the time. The polyboard is calculating the actual shapes of the of the shelves according to the curved back. Let's put in just one last door in here. Put in a, a door, uh, just one simple door. And let's put in, well, let's say that this particular door Uh, we don't want it applied globally, we want it built in. Just a mistake. And let's go into this volume here and put three shelves. Let's have a look what's given here. So we can see that we're actually here, we're actually putting in, making it a bit of furniture, which is quite complex, um, with drawers and shelves uh, all fitting around the curved back. So you can see it's, it's fairly easy to set up a curved back. It's fairly easy to just treat it like any other cabinet and assemble the assemble the different elements in it as you need them. Um, and it really makes a very neat project, very, very simply, very quickly. And Polyboy is calculating 
all the different parts as you go, of course. Um, now, this is an example of a solid sort of design that you can do very quickly in Polyboard. Um, a curved back, um, which we have put in here on each section of the curved back, we put in a decorative effect with a mahogany inlay, of a, you know, um, an ebony inlay. An, e an ebony in inlay, sorry. Um, we've created, we've applied a design to each door which is made of um, ebony inlay and different frames with panels. And you can see we've added a bit more shaping to the top. We've ra rounded off the corners of the top here, so it gives a bit more pleasing. And we've added a, a plinth underneath here. All this is applied very, very easily with polyboard. Um, you can build a project like this and play around with different designs. Um, you probably only take about you know, 20 minutes to build the project once you're used to it, once you know how, how to do this. In 20 minutes or half an hour you can build up a design of this project and you can play around with the design very, very easily. It's very easy to modify. So I hope that that's showed you a little bit the different possibilities of polyboard uh, concerning how to do curved backs. Um, if we need, when we need this back to be really curved and we want to take off the segments, we will put, uh, export the DXF files into a CAD system and then we could actually draw over the points of the segments and draw the plan as a curve. So, I hope that's been interesting for you and I hope to see you again in another video. Goodbye.